Thank you for choosing the CSRD Compass. Let's partner up to achieve full CSRD compliance. Demystifying the CSRD, Timelines for Companies, by the CSRDCompass.com. The Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, CSRD, recently approved by the European Parliament, is set to bring significant changes to corporate reporting requirements. This short video aims to help businesses understand the CSRD implementation timeline, the steps required for full compliance, and the benefits of going beyond compliance to embrace sustainability fully. What is the EU Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, CSRD? The CSRD is a legislative instrument by the European Union EU, that aims to establish a harmonized and consistent regulatory framework for sustainability reporting by companies. The CSRD comes into effect in 2023, will replace the existing Non-Financial Reporting Directive NFRD. Which companies will the CSRD apply to? Different types of companies operating in Europe will be subject to the CSRD. Details will be provided later in this video. When does the CSRD take effect for different types of companies? Phase 1, Large Companies The first phase of the timeline is marked by the commencement of the financial year on 1 January 2024. From this point onwards, the directive applies to large undertakings and parent undertakings of a large group, within the context of Article 3, 4, of Directive 2013-34 EU see picture in this video. This group of companies is already subject to the NFRD. They will apply the CSRD and ESRS to start reporting in 2025 for financial year 2024. Phase 2, extension to other large companies. This phase includes large undertakings and parent undertakings of a large group, as per Directive 2013-34 EU, not previously covered. See the picture in this video for detailed definition. You can pause the video to check the timeline or take a look at our blog for detailed analysis. Phase 3, Embracing Small and Medium-Sized Undertakings The next phase kicks in from the financial years starting on or after 1 January 2026. Different types of companies in this group will start reporting in 2027 for financial year 2026. At this juncture, the CSRD's requirements extend to small and medium-sized undertakings, small and non-complex credit institutions, as well as captive insurance undertakings. This group will report against the CSRD in 2027 for financial year 2026. See details on the picture in this video, you can pause the video if necessary. Group 3 companies include different subgroups. See definitions in this video for details. You can also check out our blog for detailed analysis. Phase 4, Inclusion of Third Country Undertakings Finally, the directive extends its reach to third country undertakings, coming into effect for financial years beginning on or after 1 January 2028. This group will report against the CSRD in 2029 for financial year 2028. Consider pausing the video to see more details from the picture. Ensuring Clarity and Alignment the role of member states. As EU member states adopt these measures, they are required to refer to the CSRD during their official publication, either by including a reference or accompanying the measures with such a reference. Which sustainability reporting standards will apply? Under the CSRD, companies operating in the EU, except macro undertakings, will be subject to the European Sustainability Reporting Standards ESRS, including the preparation of an entity-specific disclosures and mandatory reporting on the sustainability matters of the business. The first set of 12 draft ESRS standards were published in November 2022 and is expected to be adopted by the EC by 30 June 2023. Standards for SMEs, non-European companies, sector standards and assurance standards will be published in the future. What are the key challenges of EU corporate sustainability reporting? Data availability and quality. Gathering accurate, high-quality data in accordance with the CSRD's requirements can be challenging, particularly for small and medium-sized enterprises (SMEs), which might not have the same resources as larger corporations. Adapting to new reporting requirements, the CSRD substantially expands on previous non-financial reporting requirements. Complexity of standards. Understanding and complying with the different standards and frameworks can be a complex task, especially given the new and more detailed requirements brought forth by the CSRD. Training and competency development. 
there might be a lack of knowledge or understanding of the CSRD within the company. Assurance Services The CSRD introduces the need for assurance over the reported information. Integration with Business Strategy Companies need to integrate sustainability into their core business strategy, not only to comply with the CSRD but also to ensure that their sustainability efforts are genuine and effective. Engaging Stakeholders The CSRD requires companies to report on how they engage with their stakeholders. Third Country Undertakings Compliance For entities outside the EU, third country undertakings, understanding and complying with the CSRD can be particularly challenging, due to different existing regulations in their home countries. Your next steps with CSRD and ESRS Sustainability Reporting Begin by acquainting yourself and your team with the CSRD and ESRS reporting requirements without delay. To facilitate your understanding, we've compiled a wealth of resources available on the CSRD Compass website. Take a look at the CSRDCompass.com to find more details. Thanks for watching. We look forward to welcoming you in the next one.